Back at the first checkpoint of the day. And I said I'd show you around the interior of this car, but first, something we haven't been using yet, custom headsets. Now this car is pretty loud, as I'm sure you've gathered from the footage earlier in car, but this, this is just such a nice touch. Check this out. Look at these, matching paint job, matching logos. The difference with these on, I mean, you don't really need it if it's just you, but if you've got a passenger in, talking to each other is just, it's night and day. I mean, I'm not sure if the sound on the uh, in-car camera does it any justice, but it is super loud in here. You put these on. First of all, you feel like you're a fighter jet pilot. <laughs> but second of all, with this little mic here, little mic that goes right in front of your mouth, you can talk really normally. In fact, you can almost just like softly speak. You can hear each other fine. And it basically stops you on a long journey, having to shout to each other for hours on end. So. Really nice touch, and also, when you're wearing them, photographs look mega. You really do look like you're in some sort of road jet. It's brilliant. Anyway, nice touch. So, main differences then of the interior of this car versus, say, a P1 GTR, I would say is actually the quality of the finish on, on this. And what you might not take on board here is interior finish. Now, first of all, the steering wheel, incredibly bespoke. This has had a lot of input and feedback from the owners who have bought this car. Oh, there goes an F1 starting up. GTR, no less. <laughs> I'll talk to you after that thing stopped. Okay, just uh, had a location change, so you'll see a completely different car next to me now. P1, I've just had to drive quickly to lunch. Anyway, back in the LM. Yeah, interior details. So, based on a P1 GTR, which is their sort of uh, track focus P1. The internals, the internal quality has a sort of more sophisticated, refined finish to it. And that's because this is a road legal car. P1 GTR was never initially intended to hit the road. This was from day one. Now, the differences between the GTR and this, for example, all of the internals on a, a GTR, all of this exposed carbon roof, the edges are just a lot sharper. It's not as refined it's pretty raw and hardcore now not to say that this isn't but just the way that they finished every single edge in in here is just a much more bespoke finish the carbon weave on the a pillars it is a huge huge weave but the way it's finished it's stunning it's got this beautiful like satin matte finish and the whole cage is inbuilt all the way back can hear there's no rear window either that's gone it's all it's just one big carbon cave and small features like this the Lanzante logo on the uh, iris system that's really nice touch and also to remind you that you're in an engine that is special if I move my foot four liter baby okay more subtle but cool details this has as requested by the client, a slot for the key, which is beautifully painted, look. P1 LM on the key, and there's a really nice slot here for it. Sounds small, but in this car, there's nowhere to put baggage, hence my passenger footwell is full of baggage. <laughs> driver's head unit. So on this, the driver is the master switch, for the whole intercom system. So this actually turns it on and off, but the passenger is able to control the volume of their own headset. So that's just on off, passenger volume. There's no inbuilt USB chargers, so there is this little handy 12 volt uh, slot there, so you can put in your in-car chargers, etc. Not that you need reminding, but I love that it has a bespoke logo on, on startup. Now, because this is race car through and through, the only thing that Iris does is climate control. If you're familiar with the uh, interior of Maya LT, I've shown it quite a few times, but the instrument cluster is exactly the same, but there's normally sat-nav, apps, settings, all sorts of things. This only has 
climb it. So you can only do, it's unavailable because car's off, but you can only do the air con with this and that's it. <laughs> Which actually is brilliant. Also, the seats, how stunning are these? Now, the seats are just a really thin, that is the whole thickness of the seat there, that just carbon lip. Obviously, the whole point of this car is ultra lightweight focus. So instead of putting any sort of extra padding, electrical seats, etc., it is literally just lightly trimmed. It is, th that is it, look. It's just a super light trim that sits in there. Um, more comfortable th than it looks, but on a longer journey, passenger definitely wants a bit of lumbar support. But um, yeah, truly, truly special. I'm still kind of, I'm, I'm speaking about this like quite blasé. There's five of these in the world. Well, here's the uh, door unlock, pull that. You actually have to hold it down and then open the uh, door like that. Thank you. It's like millimeters uh, off the uh, tree. Yeah. And uh, yeah, here we are. Chassis number four of five. So that is genuinely how rare these cars are. Um, honor to even sit in one, uh, amazing to even see one, for me to have the opportunity to drive one. I've been trying my very best to take the experience on board as it's actually happening because I find when I get home, in goes the SD card in the uh, laptop and I load it up and I'm like, oh, did that actually happen? What an insane day. And the moment passes me by and before I know it, I'm on to the next event and that's it. Today, I'm not gonna let that happen. I'm absorbing every single moment. And how amazing is it that we have this medium of YouTube that I can share this with you. So yeah, it's just super, super awesome. And these are just to pull them down, like so. And you can hear, by the way, it clicks. That door is super hollow and light. I really love the wing mirrors. They're mounted on the A pillars here, and you've constantly got this fabulous wing, which is active. There's an active aero wing there. That thing is so huge. But yeah, I love that they're mounted there. And it actually gives you better visibility when you're looking out of the left-hand window. You can see underneath this wing, it's not always in, in shot. So for oncoming traffic from junctions, that area is great. The other thing you might have noticed, there's no line in the window here. That's because there is no retractable window. And as a result, the side windows are absolutely huge. Now they don't wind down, but on track cars you don't need them to. Fancy Lexan plastic window there. Have a look at the size of this way. I haven't seen a picture yet that really does it much justice, but conveniently we have a P1 parked next to it. I mean, in what world does this sort of thing happen? So there's the wing on the LM. And here's your standard P1. <laughs> <laughs> to give you an idea, standard P1 recesses within the bodywork here, yeah? So it finishes inside the, the external wheel line. Um, and even, even when it's up, it's probably only up about here, right? Compar comparatively with this, as you can see, the wing is directly in line with the external wheel line of this car, which, by the way, has wider wheels anyway than a standard P1. Um, and it probably sits twice the height. It is unbelievably large. We also have the, I mean, the incredible situation that we have here is that we have two other LMs here, um, which means that on the odd occasion, I've actually found myself following another LM while I'm driving this LM, and it gives you some idea of what you're actually driving. It's just this event, the McLaren F1 Owners Club, I gotta say a massive thank you to these guys for putting on such a special occasion. It's, it really is. I mean, I've done rallies all around the world, and in terms of just the people are fantastic. They're so passionate and lovely. The locations are out of this world, and it's just run fantastically well, and it's really chilled, and you get cars of this magnitude just available to drive. So, um, yeah, congrats, guys, on a fantastic 25th anniversary event. I find myself 